This is the first of several hearings of the newly created Senate Finance Subcommittee on Fiscal Responsibility and Economic Growth. The subcommittee is charged with examining how major revenue and expenditure policies affect our e economic uh, outlook and the prospects for long-term growth. The subcommittee's jurisdiction also extends to management of the public debt and Treasury Department operations. Broadly speaking, the subcommittee is concerned with the efficient allocation and management of taxpayer dollars. Our uh, ranking member is Senator Crapo. He is tied up in another meeting. Uh, he will be here before the end of uh, the hearing and has asked me to go ahead and proceed. The Fiscal Responsibility and Economic Growth Subcommittee will look at the big picture trends related to spending revenue, deficits, as well as the narrow issues that involve government waste and inefficiency in programs or agencies that fall under the jurisdiction of this uh, overall finance committee. Thus, the topic of today's hearing. Even in the best of years, the income tax filing process is sometimes an unwelcome event for millions of taxpayers required to navigate the ins and outs of a complex tax code. But an increasing number of taxpayers, the initial preparation of an income tax return may be just the beginning of an extended nightmare that can continue for months or even years. Because victims of tax-related identity theft are the casualties of a system ill-equipped to deal with the growing proficiency and sophistication of today's tax scam artist. Just since 2008, the IRS has identified 470,000 incidents of identity theft affecting more than 390,000 taxpayers. That's a high number. And while the IRS reports that it has stopped over a billion dollars in fraudulent refund claims, there's no reliable estimate of how much it's dispersed to criminals, to scam artists, and to other fraudsters. For individual taxpayers, a Social Security number is the key to unlocking and assessing the federal tax system. At one time, Social Security numbers had a sole purpose, facilitating the participation in the old age survivors and disability insurance program. But in today's modern wired world, Social Security numbers are shared with little thought almost any time a private or public entity request a unique, exclusive number to identify and track a customer or a client. In short, the keys to the tax system have been copied many times over. It should come as no surprise, then, that when our tax system is bombarded with sham returns that use stolen names and stolen Social Security numbers, that they're going to be claiming fraudulent tax refunds. And the ease with which the scam artists can readily file electronic tax returns, the availability of prepaid debit cards and other hard to trace options for the delivery of tax refunds, and the low risk that criminal sanctions or penalties will be imposed 
it has created, in many respects, the perfect crime. But for the victims caught in the middle of these schemes, tax-related identity theft imposes extraordinary burdens and economic hardship, as we will hear from our first panel of witnesses. Taxpayer victims spend countless hours obtaining the necessary documents to prove who they are. Inconsistent messages and conflicting instructions from customer service agents at the IRS can worsen the situation. And innocent taxpayers whose identities have been stolen frequently find themselves in a confusing and frustrating form of bureaucratic ping pong and bureaucratic runaround. Last month, following several recent reports of tax-related identity theft schemes in Florida, I asked the Treasury Inspector General for Tax Administration to launch a new investigation into this issue. That work is underway, and this committee looks forward to those findings. We've also been working with several of our colleagues to strengthen the information sharing program to crack down on the tax scams by prison inmates, which often involve stolen identities. Legislation to extend that program will be needed, and we're going to be working in this subcommittee to get it done. The purpose of our hearing today is to investigate the growing problem of tax fraud through identity theft. First, we'll hear from taxpayers who have fallen victim to complex identity-related tax scams. Their stories are naturally heart-tugging. The second panel, which includes the taxpayer advocate, the director of tax issues at the Government Accountability Office, and the deputy IRS commissioner, will explore the scope and magnitude of identity theft in the tax system and examine the laws, regulations, and administrative practices that are in place to prevent the processing of fraudulent tax returns and trying to protect these victims. The hearing testimony will help guide the development of new legislation to crack down on tax fraud and to shield victims from further hardship. I fully expect this first hearing on this issue to lay the groundwork for congressional action and to generate novel ideas for a legislative initiative to aggressively combat the growing problem of tax-related identity theft.